Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to introduce you a, um, a small mini system I uh, came up with. You can use it for any kind of setting, any kind of system, um, and just um, include it in your game. So we're talking about law and order. Um, I came up with a system that deals with um, some trouble with the law in game. So. Many times my players um, face some uh, trouble and they end up in jail. So what usually happens in uh, these situations in games is that um, things kind of spiral out of control in a very nonsensical way and the whole game becomes a mess. I mean, the moment uh, the characters in a scenario are in prison, they automatically plan their escape and somehow their escape works and it becomes a murder hobo series of unfortunate events and things become very messy very funny and it kind of i don't know it just doesn't work for me anymore so i wanted to integrate some mechanics that allow you to have have some sort of mechanisms that are a bit realistic they're fun they're a bit random but they also make sense, much more sense than um, having people escape prisons all the time. So, this is a very small mini system, included in just two spreads. And uh, let's see how it works. So, um, the concept is that uh, once a character or the characters are uh, arrested for something, uh, a trial should follow. And so, um, let me start from the beginning. So, it goes like this. At times, characters might find themselves imprisoned. These situations are often swiftly resolved by game masters with characters hastily planning their escape. However, this section explores more authentic options, aligning penalties with a committed crime. The first step is a trial. Following the commission of a crime and subsequent, subsequent imprisonment, a trial is probable. Irrespective of the crime's gravity and considering the adventure's medieval-like setting, characters should be afforded an opportunity to defend themselves during the trial. So, that said, uh, we actually get to roll for the type of judge that will accommodate that trial. And the judge can be anything from strict to neutral to compassionate or even generous. And that, of course, will uh, affect the result. So, the judge, as the authoritative figure, holds the responsibility of delivering the verdict. A role is used to determine the judge's character. So, you roll 1d10 to determine the type of judge. And then, we move to the judge table and we see what the type of a judge entails. So we've got the compassionate judge and uh, the type of the judge is connected to the penalty that will be carried out. Um, so we've got the severity of the crime that is to be decided by the game master. It could be a minor offense, a moderate offense, a major offense and a serious crime. These four categories apply um, regardless of uh, the type of judge. The only difference is that um, if the judge is compassionate or generous or neutral or strict, it will change uh, how the verdict is carried out. So, um, a compassionate judge, if you see, uh, you've got the potential verdict and penalties, you've got a public apology, fines, restitution and stocks. We've got explanation for this, but basically it means that you get off easily, uh, nothing very serious happens to you. And so that is uh, a probable scenario. And, uh, you know, the characters can pay a fine and just uh, move on with their adventure. Or if they're forced to have a, to perform some sort of public apology, is a good chance for role-playing as well. Then we've got the generous uh, judge. Um, it's more or less the same. 
some uh, just some variations when it comes to penalties. We've got jail time as well there, and um, maybe it will be a, a short period of time, days, weeks, and then we've got the neutral uh, judge. So we've got some heavier possibilities here, like exile, jail time, flogging, and branding that should affect adventuring a lot because slaves were branded people you know um, when you were branded you get a reputation a very negative one and that just follows you around and then we've got the strict judge that could be anything from exile amputation death penalty and torture so yeah things can be very very tough so depending on the uh, severity of the crime if you happen upon a strict judge I would be a handful. Anyways, and the second spread is just the explanation of the penalties. So I've got here uh, a fine, a monetary penalty imposed on the offender based on the severity of the crime. So it could be all golden items. You roll again. You roll again for this. So, you know, allow some flexibility. You roll a d10 and you see if you roll a 1, all golden items. They are lost, everything. Two to five, it's 500 gold pieces, uh, and then it's 300, and then it's 100. And then you've got stocks, a form of public humiliation, where the offender's limbs are restrained, subjecting them to mockery and discomfort. So, uh, again, you roll, and you see how long that lasts. Um, and then you've got flogging, uh, you know, you are whipped in the streets or something like that in the public square and you get and you receive some lashes and uh, you can also impose a physical toll uh, according to the number of lashes so this is based on my system of metal tails, age of grit and uh, you make a vigor roll, it's like a saving throw and if you fail you lose grit point like saying one hit point permanently so yeah, you can combine a physical toll to make the uh, penalty more severe. And then you have branding. A permanent mark is burned onto the offender's skin as a symbol of their crime. So you roll to determine where this mark is made. So the worst is if you roll one on the head because everyone can see it. The best case scenario is on the back. You get the point. Then we've got the exile, which was very serious back then. So if your only one is permanent, it can go up to a year, months, a month. And then you've got restitution. Offender becomes a servant to repay their debt or crime over a set period. Again, that could be a very good uh, uh, pass for role playing. You can you know, design a side quest or something. Um, and you can determine, you can roll to determine the period of that restitution. It could be months, uh, weeks days whatever you want then you have amputation no much explanation is needed um you lose some stuff uh you can combine that of course with uh, physical attributes like strength etc it's up to you uh you can lose a hand and eye tongue finger um that is very heavy for your character of course you got and then you have torture even worse this is becoming a living hell. You can be tortured for days. Um, and uh, for each day of torture, you, uh, you must make a roll to survive. And then you've got jail time. It just changes the duration of your time. And then, of course, you get a death penalty when you just die. But with a different style, you can go out with a style... You can roll one for a public torture and death, and then burning, hanging, beheading. You, ho you get the whole, you know, starter pack of medieval life out there. So yeah, that's about it. So you can use this system. Um, this is a part of the Book of Masters from my uh, book, Metro Tales, but you can use it in any kind of setting. You can have the uh, spread uh, if you become a, a patron, but you can watch this video and improvise your own make your own uh, uh, set of rules 
and uh, play your own style of law and order. So let me know what you think. If you liked it, if you have any other uh, suggestions and uh, enjoy making some very hard time for your players. See you next time.